Hi guys, I thought I would do a little video on this ET12S multimeter cam thermal imager or thermal IR camera. Now there's quite a lot of reviews that have already been done by other people, so I am not actually planning to do too much of an investigation into the multimeter features. Um, as you can see, there is bunches of them here. Uh, this Kerry Wong, he does a good job on, uh, you know, pulling it apart and showing what's in there and so on. However, I am not quite sure if I've actually seen any uh, reviews mentioning how to, uh, if the thermal camera is actually good enough to find shorts on PCBs and stuff like that, which is a common thing that we use these things for in the uh, electronics world. So we're going to investigate that a little bit. And as far as the multimeter is concerned, we'll, we'll have a quick look at, at um, accuracy and voltage, but that's as far as I will go. Because as I said, they have already been reviewed uh, in uh, much better than I can do in other reviews. Okay, so when you receive this thing, it comes in a in a, uh, a little cardboard box and <clears throat> all you'll find in there is uh, a little instruction manual and a set of cheap probes which I don't tend to use I put those in my box of stuff that I don't use and a, a little USB-C charging cable which and then there's the device itself, and that's basically it. There's also a little thing that you can scan, apparently. I haven't gone there. Instructions for use. So it is pretty small, but it feels nice in your hand. It's a hand-sized device. Now, the multimeter itself, if you look at the... It, at the um, information over here let me get some more pages here and this is more or less the information over here uh, somewhere it says that it's a 6,000 count multimeter on the uh, page that's selling it but it's not it's 4,000 count um, the precision accuracy is not very high 2% on 400 millivolts, 1%, 2%, 1%, 1.5% on, on ohms, 10% um, on diode test, 1.5% on large uh, resistors, 2%, 5%. Now, if you compare that to my normal multimeter that I use um, in my work that I do, like I use a BK Precision one, and you will find that it is 10 times more accurate on average. Um, let me see now. See, 0.1 degrees, 0.1 degrees, 0.1 percent uh, on and two digits instead of one percent and three digits and two percent and three digits, and on. That's DC on AC uh, range. It is 1.2, 1 1% 1 and 1.2%. <clears throat> and here it's the same. It's 10% um, and then 2% and so on. And on uh, a good multimeter has a, a microamp range. This thing doesn't ha even have that. And um, but on uh, DC current, it's one percent. And here doesn't even mention that. I don't even think it has a current range, does it? No, it doesn't. Uh, so that's uh, again as a multimeter a shortcoming. Resistance, uh, half a percent. Um, resistance here is 0.5%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0.4%, 0
uh, and going up to one and a half percent for the uh, a higher, which is actually similar to what this one is saying. Any case, as I said, um, as a multimeter, this thing has shortcomings. It does not have um, the capacitance can only go up to a hundred microfarads, which is not not much. And um, as I said, it doesn't have current, and also there is no way to actually have a, a, a relative button there. So when you put the probes in there, the probes always have some resistance. And if you want to measure low resistances, then you'd have to use relative mode on a normal multimeter, but it doesn't have that either. So as a multimeter, it is actually uh, a pretty poor device. <clears throat> And so let's have a look. So, okay, as a guide here, <clears throat> I've got exactly 10 volts connected to both of them with exactly the same leads in case that is of um, in importance. I've got uh, two sets of probes which are identical connected, not the ones that came with it, but better ones. And as you can see, We've got 10 volts exactly on the BK Precision one, and we've got 9.96 volts on the um, <clears throat> 12S. And that's roughly how it goes, and that's not unique with this thing. All the cheaper uh, Chinese multimeters, they always show um, a few millivolts, 2 to 4 millivolts lower than what the actual voltage is. And uh, somebody there must be making a chip that um, does the multimeter functions, and that is um, how it works. If I change it to uh, 5 volts, similar thing, uh, 5 volts comes up as 4.97. Um, <clears throat> BK Precision one is, um, can't make up its mind if it's 4.99 at 5 volts, but um, it's close. Anyway, so that, that's really all I wanted to show. Um, it's good enough for simple measurements, I guess, but um, it does show a little bit of uh, less accuracy than a professional multimeter does. But let's have a look at the, more importantly, let's have a look at the uh, infrared mode. Oh, and uh, for the records, this thing is actually faulty. When you go to um, continuity mode, the beeper doesn't work. So there is a, a, a fault in there. And another flaw that it has is that the um, when you're in infrared mode, and I don't know if that's unique to this one or if um, this all of them have that problem, when you go to infrared mode, you can actually um, store these a little. This is a touch screen, and yeah, it keeps on cutting out. This is annoying as well. Um, <clears throat> if you push that little uh, section there, it actually saves the image, and the image is corrupted when you are uh, when it, after it saves it. As you can see over here. Um, there is streaks there of mix, missing pixels and the temperature down below and everything, everything is kind of uh, corrupted. And this would require a firmware update, I would think. So that also is not a good thing on this. And it seems like they released it a little bit prematurely. So I have a little PCB over here that is, it's got a shorted capacitor on it right there. And we're going to see if we can see that on the infrared camera. I'm going to apply about one and a half volts at three amps and see what we can see. Now before we get started, um, as you can see, there's no power being applied right now. But um, this is common to IR cameras. It, um, there is a 
component here, which is actually this thing over here, that is reflective. And reflections makes it think that there is extra heat there. And in the setup menu, and I saw one review where the guy said, oh, I don't know what that means. Uh, if you go to the setup menu, the IR camera, there is a um, emissivity value which uh, I've set to 0.9, it was by default 0.95. Um, if you've got something with lots of reflections, you will have to go down on that uh, value over there, otherwise it can be, it gets confused. And um, so that's what that is for. And you've got some presets here, 0.1, 0.3, 0.5, 0.7, 0.9. So um, I thought I would mention that, and that's common to all IR cameras, and it's good that I have that. They have two color tables here. Um, I'm using the default one and Celsius, of course. And so it goes. There's no use in using Fahrenheit. I wish they, got, I wish they did away with Fahrenheit for everything because it's a use, useless scale. Okay, so um, as you can see, this is the 90 by 120 pixel. Um, you can kind of make out some. Uh, if I put the, the probe underneath, you can kind of see it moving a little bit. And you can kind of see little components there. So let's turn it on. We need to be, let's have a look, around about here. Okay, there it goes, you see, right there. It's picked it up. And in a case like this, if you want to know where it is, you would use something like this. You see, you can point at it. And you'll find out that I'm pointing right at the little capacitor that has failed. So I think, you know, you can use it for that. It's certainly a lot, of, lot cheaper than... Um, the more professional IR cameras, like the one that I have been using, is this one over here. And this one is hundreds of dollars more expensive. More like $350 more expensive. <clears throat> and if you've got a budget, I do think that you can actually use that ET12S for that purpose. Um, don't buy it for as as a multimeter, but as a um, uh, this one here is actually um, it has different different modes. As you can see, you can it's got a much higher resolution, of course, and um, it has a camera mode in it, so it overlays the actual real image onto the. Um, uh, if I turn on the light, you probably see it see it better. So you can actually, this is actually just using its camera. And um, if you push this button over here, you bring in the in different, uh, you can overlay the actual IR portion of the camera. And so you can actually see in those different uh, levels, it is less. And now it is nearly all IR camera, so you push it until you usually have it in that mode here. So I can actually see the components as well as the IR version uh, mode. And um, again, see there it is. If I turn it off, you'll see it fades out. Turn it on. So. That's the, um, on this board, and I've got another little board over here that um, I've actually soldered on a, a, a little component here that is, I think it is actually a little, what do you call it, uh, inductor. I'm not quite sure, but it is completely, um, you know, it's got like 20 milli ohms of resistance or something, so it, it heats up. Again, I put some wires on here, and we will connect up 
power supply. So this is actually not a capacitor that we're looking at, but you can see other the types of components that uh, might be problematic. Uh, again, if I use this my normal, you see again, you got um, something there that would appear to be, let me put it up a bit, appear to be hot, but it is actually uh, a reflection of that. So that's one thing to keep in mind with. Um, huh. Where did that, where did that come from? A little component here with a an LVR. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so let's have a look here. Turn on the power. Yeah, see there it goes. Let me see if I can stop the reflection on the screen a bit. Turn it off. It's hard to get a a, a clear image on this thing. On this, um, let me see if I can get the camera a little bit clearer. Okay, that's probably a little better here. Let me try to hold this with my right hand and push the button on the power supply with my left hand. Yeah, there she blows. See, and immediately the pointer goes to a 30 degrees and up. So now let's try the ET12 and we'll see the difference. Try to have it so it's not. Try not to wiggle my hand while I'm pushing the button there. Oh, it's actually off for some reason. Yeah, see, there it goes. And again, I can put the pointer on it there, and we are pointing at it. And now, of course, the camera is blurred in that way. So I do think that that is actually um, useful. And if you can buy the thing for less than $100, like I did, it is actually um, a useful device for that. Obviously, it doesn't have the features of um, more expensive IR cameras like um, the other one that I have, but um, it will do the job, I think. Anyway, that's all I was wondering about. Um, I haven't seen anyone actually um, do that to test it for um, if it is useful to find short circuits on PCBs because that's in electronics, you know, that's what we tend to use that for. I have no idea what they designed this thing for, what kind of, uh, maybe there is a, some sort of uh, trades out there or something that would find this thing useful, that it's got some simple voltage measurements to take or something and uh, look at uh, infrared images, maybe electricians or something that are looking for overheated cables or um, motors that are overheating, uh, stuff like that. But um, it can also be used for the electronics repair business. So that's all I've got. And um, again, if you like the videos, don't forget to subscribe and like because um, that will help me a little bit. And I'll see you guys later.